This is actually where we're going to be putting your sidewall sheathing on. One of the things I want to point out here, this is actually, you're going to see this is a window header that we have with the LVL, okay? All of our header units are going to be solid. There's no gap in the middle of them. And again, that's something that Barden really prides themselves on, is a quality product. And uh, to answer your question on the inside, is one of the things that you'll probably not find is a, not enough material in your home or structurally sound. But at this point, we're going to put on your sidewall sheathing. Whether it's our standard 7 16 OSB, or which is also a popular option, uh, is a half inch plywood. But again, on the custom material end, uh, we actually built it with a customer, uh, uh, it was about two years ago now, but he was an engineer and he wanted a five ply Douglas fir sidewall sheathing. We couldn't convince him otherwise, but the customer, we have a purchasing manager, he went out and he found it and the customer got exactly what he wanted. So we're going to apply the sidewall sheathing that you expect out for your home. But in this particular case, 7 16 OSB or oriented strand board is our standard. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the, the sheathing on the, on the wall. We're going to stitch the outside edges, okay? Then we're going to use our, uh, our routing bridge. You're going to see our router right there, routing bridge, which routes out for that window and door opening. We don't use a skill saw because we want to use a router to make it nice and clean so we're not uh, cutting into the, the outside members and things of that nature. This is also the second time that we actually square and squeeze this wall panel before it sends out. See how Doug clamp, it's going to clamp it in? Squares it up. Then it'll release compression, and then we're going to send it down to our final station, which is called our stapling bridge. And if you remember inside, I mentioned that this is my favorite. It is. I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. I, I love this thing. But this is actually where we nail, or staple rather, all of your sidewall down. Now the staples, we use an inch and three quarter leg with half inch crown staples, okay? Those staples are gonna be every six inches apart, every six inches on center, with the exception of an exterior edge of your wall panel where two pieces of sheathing meet or two pieces of sheathing butt up or around a window and door opening. They're gonna be three inches on center. And Doug can actually illustrate that and move that in the opposite direction so that they are three inches on center. So they're going to bring it up here. This is the third time that they square and squeeze it. And they come down here, and there's also a laser locator on here. That laser locator, they're going to line up with those nail heads. So they know that those staples are going to be dead center of that stud. Um, and then you can um, bring it on down through here. One of the things I want to mention on this wall panel is we had the question about the overhanging. Like for instance, you'll see how this sheathing is overhanging at the bottom. That like for instance to cover your bottom plate or your sill plate. Okay, that's how we're actually going to be uh, applying that on. Can we illustrate this today, sure Doug? Can. Okay. Uh, this is a basement wall, okay. Uh, basement floors are concrete. They have to use pressure treated lumber to lay down onto the concrete, okay. So the skin is down an inch and a half so that it goes on top of that plate and covers it, okay. Uh, our standard would be three quarters up, and that's another mechanism by which we uh, tie in the walls to the uh, floor decking, okay? Anyway, bring the wall down, square it again, squeeze it, the stop, you push the wall up against the stops and then squeeze it. By the time it gets to this station, it's square, okay? But this is just an insurance policy to make sure that it is. So, get everything in place, move my machine down, Again, my laser locator enables me to make sure that uh, I'm putting my staples into a stud and not firing them into the middle of a sheet. It's going to be loud, folks, okay? Now, these guns are mounted six inches apart. I have a mechanism by which I can shift the index three inches, and I'll fire it again. So on the edges, they'll be, the staples will be three inches apart. Then I'll just go on down the line, align my laser with my nail heads. I know they're in the center of the stud because at the framing table we used our locator to make sure that those nails were going into the center. Keep on going down. This is a seam, so I'm going to change my index so that I've got stable. Keep on going. You can see this is a very rapid process. And then on the end, I'll switch the end off. So now that's complete. 
completed, I would uh, return my machine down, do a quick inspection to make sure all the staples have sunk, and then unclamp it and roll it on down the line. Okay? If I was to do this by hand, it would take probably 10 or 15 minutes to get all the staples in. Um, this machine enables us to make sure that the placement of staples is uniform. All right? uh, they stitch the top and bottom plates by hand over here uh, at the second station. Um, and final inspection is done by our dock people to make sure that there are no staples sticking out. Uh, sometimes a staple will hit a knot and it will bend out of the stud or something like that. Any of those sorts of things um, are part of our quality assurance. Each station checks the work of the station before. Anything that's out of place, uh, attention will be drawn to it and it'll be fixed. Um, the gentlemen that work here on the line have been with us for some time. Uh, everyone here is very experienced, um, but also that's why the supervisors are here, okay, to make sure that all the quality control is being enacted in the proper way, okay? But at this point, we're pretty much done. So it, you're going to release compression, and you're going to notice that overhead crane that's over there. This guy has a tough job. It's a remote control overhead crane. He can come and he can grab all of his wall panels, whether it's his exterior walls, his interior partitions, or those specialty walls. He can pick them up and he can take it and load it to the appropriate truck. So again, from start to finish, from receiving the material, to cutting the components, to fabricating it, now to loading it all in a controlled environment, okay? So follow, come up here with me. You can actually see how we actually have this a completed truck. Take a look at it. I'm kind of. This is kind of a nice uh, surprise for me. I didn't expect this, but we actually have a a, a kind of a cathedral wall here with uh, some blocking for cabinets, and then you can actually take a look at our exterior walls that are actually are fully fastened, routed out for windows and doors, as well as as I mentioned, you see those overhangs. So this is how you'll see how the plot or the OSB here. That actually overhangs, so that next stud will set right on there. That's how we tie everything together. And again, everything is going to be labeled with the whether, whether it's a wall, a partition, the length of it, and the job number. So starting from one corner of the building, working your way around. Okay. And also, you'll notice over here on the back of this trailer, that's actually all of your parts and pieces. Okay. You'll see that that uh, that pallet that's shrink wrapped. You'll notice behind you that we have a wall over there. It's got our sill seal. It's got uh, uh, several different types of hangers, uh, stabilizers, etc. But we're going to palletize that and shrink wrap it. That will actually go on top of your wall panel load, okay, when we set it out. So it's the first thing that you take off with the crane so you have everything in one uniform place and it's not floating throughout the job site and the, and the truck so you know where everything is. Where, where everything is.